When you begin to understand the nature of consciousness, you undoubtedly will start considering the idea that we are not entirely just the body that we seem to be inhabiting, but rather are an expression of the one forever flowing being which is driving us from the aether. Our perceived existence within this reality is but one of a multitude in which the whole perceives and experiences itself. Yet, we most often as a collective delude ourselves with false notions instilled within us from birth that we are or can be separate. There has only ever been one entity, however, flowing endlessly through us all and all that is. If you know the relationship of energy, you know then that there is consciousness in the rock. And if you listen closely, you might even hear the walls breathing. No matter what you wish to call it is of little consequence. Semantics of higher being are interchangeable, despite that wars will be waged over beliefs or over which stories are said to be the word of the one true religion or God. The power of the natural world and its laws are immutable. This is the grand illusion. Life has never ceased to be a dance that it stages for itself. Our self, a show, if you will. While people put on lab coats and label themselves scientists and often cite their theories of singularity, positing that bridging the thalamic stem between our brains would result in a singular consciousness to emerge in which the bodies of multiple beings who are connected by a technology, those connected would cease to refer to themselves as individuated vessels, whereas instead of the entirety of the collective of vessels who are connected, are rather likely to then refer to themselves as one singular being. What is easily dismissed in that very notion is that everything is already connected by quantum entanglement and through the law of duality, it is the illusion of separation which spawns that very idea. However, consider the idea that we already live in a state of singularity and what we experience is rather a sort of state of collective mass hallucination and delusion in which sees many believe they are somehow isolated from their environment. Yet, when we study the law of attraction, we often cite things such as when someone comes to mind and we think of that person or hear from that person in some capacity a short time later, we think it's purely coincidence. Does the evidence escape us? In many cases, the answer is obvious. Through conditioning over the ages and societal norms, such consideration of greater truths is often abandoned as mere coincidence, or in many other scenarios involving the individual, those beliefs of interconnectedness kept solely to one's own realm of thought, never be spoken out of fear or for ridicule or scorn. These are not just fanciful ideas, rather the true nature which has been effectively hidden throughout time. And both the inner being acting as the driving force has created this quote unquote show for itself. Ask for yourself, if you were God, what would you do with infinity? Would you sit in your own self-isolation looking into the emptiness of a white wall or nothingness for the entirety of your existence? Or would you create endlessly and force yourself into your creations with conditions that see you live in the doubt and limitations you've placed upon yourself that you yourself know causes you to forget? what and who you really are. Now, consider that when many in your life will exclaim that death is merely an illusion, and this is why. You are not the body your consciousness is, is experiencing itself from. You are the fragment or aspect of creator viewing itself from the viewpoint of, say, waking up with amnesia. 
how does one reach these points of consciousness, understanding, you might ask? Self-reflection and a burning desire to discover truth. Looking objectively to see past pitfalls of human thought and its many errors. To deny but to acknowledge the tendency of emotion, but to see past it and reach the unknown is ultimately how you reach these states. These are also why practices of detachment are crucial in the quest to understand because our ego wants to keep all things suspended in a state. It never wants to let go of its own insecurities or securities. And should one not learn to detach from the idea of owning people or things, they will not move beyond into a comprehension or understanding of higher perspectives. To journey into the unknown can be frightening for many, and no doubt along your journey you have met many who will cast doubt upon you. In their insecurity to look beyond their own flaw or darkness, they find comfort in the norm. They find comfort on bended knee, and what they adamantly reject manifests as the phantoms in which they are too scared to face. Look to the one in, who in ignorance rejects fear and in that they do not understand or have knowledge. They are quick to judge others as demonic or versions of the devil's tricks. Yet yeah, is just fear. A brand not too different than the opposite side of the spectrum where who knowingly use fear to doing so in order to procure compliance. Fear comes in many forms but only ones who carry love in their heart and see past the illusions that aim to prey upon conditioned reactions shall find truth. What may be the ultimate form of truth is that often ignored or yet to be reached in this show is the knowledge and affirmation that only comes with self-assuredness that we are in fact, in part, and are God. The real question becomes, will you stand up and take accountability for who you are, or will you continue to play the victim in this show and choose to suffer in your own confusion? That answer is only for you to decide.